Hello students, I hope you all fine. In this video session, we are going to learn 9th standard science unit 11 atomic structure. Hello students, today we are going to learn unit 11 atomic structure. Dear children, we already know that anything that has definite mass and occupy space is known as matter. And we have learnt what are the different states of matter also. If somehow we could go on dividing any piece of matter, we will get smaller and smaller particles until we reach the smallest particle of it which cannot be divided further. These smallest particles can be atoms, molecules or ions. So what is atom? Atoms are the building blocks of matter. Every substance is made up of atoms in one form or other. Different kinds of atoms have different properties, both physical and chemical properties. So Always scientists, they wanted to find out what are the particles present inside an atom and how are these particles arranged in an atom. For explaining this, many scientists proposed various atomic models. We have learnt Dalton's atomic theory and J.J. Thomson's model in class 8. Now we will learn about subatomic particles and the other atomic models to explain how these particles are arranged within an atom. First topic which we are going to see is about discovery of nucleus. In 1911, Lord Rutherford, a scientist from New Zealand, performed his famous experiment of bombarding a thin gold foil with very small positively charged particles called alpha particles. He selected a gold foil because he wanted as thin layer as possible and gold is the most malleable metal. So he observed that most of the alpha particles passed straight through the foil but some alpha particles were slightly deflected from the straight path then very few alpha particles completely bounced back let's see the brief explanation of the Rutherford model a thin gold foil about 400 atoms thick was kept on the path of the alpha particle. They also kept a circular screen coated with the zinc sulphide surrounding the foil. When an alpha particle hit the screen, it would produce fluorescence glow in the point where they struck the screen. From the point on the screen, one can infer the path taken by the alpha particle after penetrating the gold foil. The old setup was kept inside a vacuum glass chamber to avoid alpha particles from interacting and getting scattered by air molecules. So later Rutherford generalized these results of alpha particles scattering experiment was suggested a model of the atom that is known as Rutherford atomic model. Now we'll see the Rutherford's atomic model. According to this model, the atom contains large empty space. There is a positively charged mass at the center of the atom known as nucleus. The size of the nucleus of an atom is very small compared to the size of an atom. The electrons revolve around the nucleus in close circular paths called orbits. An atom as a whole is electrically neutral. The number of protons 
and electrons in an atom are equal we can able to see that figure nucleus is the positive charge and negative charge is the electrons it is always revolve around the nucleus in the closed circular paths rutherford's model of an atom was some what like that of the solar system just as in the solar system the sun is the center and the planets revolve around it similarly in an atom the nucleus contains the main mass and the electrons revolve around it in orbits or shells limitations in rutherford's model according to electromagnetic theory a moving electron should accelerate and continuously lose energy due to the loss of energy path of electron may reduce and finally the electron should fall into the nucleus if it happens so atom becomes unstable but atoms are stable thus rutherford's model failed to explain the stability of an atom so this figure showing an atom losing energy and fall into the nucleus next model is that bohr's model of an atom in 1913 niels bohr a danish physicist explain the causes of the stability of the atom in a different manner the main postulates are in atoms the electron revolve around the nucleus in stationary circular paths called orbits or shells or energy level while revolving around the nucleus in an orbit an electron neither loses nor gains energy this bohr's model explains that an electron in a shell can move to a higher or lower energy shell by absorbing or releasing a fixed amount of energy now we'll see discovery of neutrons in 1932 james chadwick observed when beryllium was exposed to alpha particles particles with about the same mass as protons were emitted these emitted particles carried no electrical charges they were called as neutrons neutrons present in the nucle of all atoms except of hydrogen the mass of a neutron is almost equal to the mass of proton neutrons is represented by n so what are the properties of neutrons you already know that these emitted particles carried no electrical charges so this what we are saying neutrons so this particles was not found to be deflected by any magnetic or electric field proving that it is electrically neutral so its mass is equal to 1.676 into 10 to the power minus 24 gram that is 1 amu here 1 amu is the one atomic mass unit now we'll see the characteristics of fundamental particles here the atom is built up of a number of subatomic particles here the three subatomic particles of great importance in understanding the structure of an atom or electrons protons and neutrons so these three are the subatomic particles electrons protons and neutrons we can able to see in the figure electron is always revolve around the nucleus protons and neutrons it will located in the center of the nucleus now we'll see the properties of sub atomic particles what are the sub atomic particles already we know that 
electrons, protons and neutrons. What are the symbol for this subatomic particles? For electrons, it is always negative charge, so negative. Protons is a positive charge, so it is positive. Neutrons, it is electrically neutral, so N0. What, are, what is the relative electrical charges? For electron is negative, so that 1 minus. And proton is positive charge, so 1 plus. Neutron is electrically neutral, so that 0. What is the relative mass for these three subatomic particles? For electrons, 1 by 1840. For proton is 1. And neutron is also 1. Here protons and neutrons have the same mass. What is the actual mass for these three subatomic particles? For electron is that 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 28. For proton 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 24. Neutron 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 24. So already I said protons and neutrons have the same mass. Let's see the parts of an atom. An atom consists of a nucleus surrounded by one or more electrons. The nucleus is the central region of the atom where the protons and neutrons are located. So protons is the positive charge, neutrons is the electrically neutral and electrons is the negative charge. It is always revolved around the nucleus. Protons and neutrons, it is in the nucleus. Now we will see nucleus. What are the things presented in the nucleus? We already know that protons and neutrons. These two collectively called, we will say nucleons. Okay. So these are found in the nucleus of an atom. Next is orbits. What is orbits? Orbit is defined as the path by which electrons revolve around the nucleus okay where the electrons is moving okay that path will say what orbit or shells so orbit is the defined as the path by which electrons revolve around the nucleus now we will move on to the next topic atomic number and mass number let us see the example of hydrogen atom only hydrogen atoms have one proton in their nuclei so you already know that that positive charge is the proton so how many protons in the hydrogen atom only one protons in the nucleus always that protons uh, will located in the nucleus in the next one helium only helium atoms have two protons Indeed, so how many protons presented in the helium atom? Two protons, that positive charge is the protons. Electrons will revolve around the nucleus. This is the gold atom. We can able to see the structure of gold atom here. Here only gold atoms have 79 protons. This shows that the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom decides which element it is so protons is very very important to identify and decides the element this is very important number is known as the atomic number so proton number given by symbol is is that of an atom let us see what is atomic number and mass number to understand clearly what is atomic number Atomic number represent Z, capital Z. The number of protons in an atom is known as atomic number. Thus, it is always a whole number because it is a count of the number of protons. Each atom has a unique number of protons and thus each atom has a different atomic number so for example atomic number of oxygen is what eight its symbol is o capital o 
its name is what element name is oxygen atomic mass 16 so here we can able to understand what is atomic number so what is atomic number number of protons in an atom is known as what atomic number you already know where the protons were located in the nucleus it is always positive charge now we have to know what is mass number and how to find mass number this mass number represent the symbol a sum of the number of protons and neutrons in an atom is called mass number for example mass number is equal to number of protons plus number of neutrons in an atom is called mass number thus it is always a whole number because it is a count of the number of particles the mass number is not found on the periodic table okay now here they given a oxygen mass number what is the atomic number already we learned so that the atomic number 8 symbol is o name element name is oxygen atomic number is 16 so now you understand clearly what is mass number number of protons plus number of neutrons is the mass number atomic number is the number of protons in an atom is the atomic number this mass number represented a an atomic number symbol represent z now we have to know what is nuclear notation or atomic symbol notation for all the element the atomic numbers are shown as subscripts and mass number are shown as superscript here we can able to see the symbols here capital x is chemical symbol for the element for example oxygen if you take oxygen element in the x place you have to write the symbol for oxygen that is o okay next is a a is the mass number is equal to a is equal to z plus n it is the formula to find the mass number you already know what is z number of protons is the z so for protons only we are using this z symbol and n is the number of neutrons when you want to find the number of neutrons this formula you have to use mass number is equal to a is equal to z plus n next is z atomic number will always write in the subscript so how to find the atomic number you know number of protons is equal to what atomic number next is neutron what is the neutron symbols symbol for neutron is that n capital n so you have to be clear in this nuclear notation let us see one example to understand clearly you already know n is the nitrogen symbol so chemical symbol for nitrogen element is n so its mass number is what 14 mass number always where you will write it is in the superscript and 7 is the atomic number so you know that atomic number will write in the subscript dear students you know that how to find atomic number mass number let us see that how to find neutron the difference between the mass number of an element and its atomic number gives the number of neutrons present in one atom of the element formula to find the atomic number is that number of neutrons is equal to mass number minus atomic number for example magnesium so you know that in the superscript what is there that is mass number in the subscript what is there atomic number so mass number is the 24 of magnesium and 12 is the atomic number of magnesium so number of neutron is equal to mass number minus atomic number 24 minus 12 is equal to 12 so what is number of neutrons 12 in the magnesium atom next topic which we are going to see is about 
electronic configuration of atoms you already know that electrons occupy different energy levels called orbits or shells the distribution of electrons in different shells is called electronic configuration this distribution of electrons is governed by certain rules or conditions known as bohr or bury rules of electronic configuration we have three rules in the electronic configuration of atoms let's see one by one first we'll see the rule 1 the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in a shell is equal to 2n square here n is the serial number of the shell from nucleus Let's see the table. First is electron shell. That is in the first shell we will say K. Second shell L. Third shell M. And fourth shell N. Next shell number. N is equal to one. N is equal to two. N is equal to three. And N is equal to four. Maximum capacity n square. So already you know that n is equal to shell number. N is the shell number. So how many electrons can present in the first shell? To find out that we will use the what two n square formula. So two into n is the one. One square is equal to two electrons. So two electrons will present in the first shell. Next is Two n square, but n is what two. So two into two square is equal to eight electrons. In the m shell, two into three square is equal to eighteen electrons. In the n shell, two into four square is equal to thirty-two electrons. So these are the electronic configuration of atoms. Rule one. Next is rule two. Think of energy levels in an atom like a ladder. Just like electrons can only be in one energy level, electrons jumping between energy level will absorb and release only a specific amount of energy. The energy released corresponds to the specific wavelength of length. So, what is rule two? Shells are filled in a stepwise manner in the increasing order of energy. So once again, what is rule two? Shells are filled in a stepwise manner in the increasing order of energy, like ladder. And last one is rule three. The outermost shell of an atom cannot have more than eight electrons, even. if it has capacity to accommodate more electrons example of calcium if you see the figure of calcium in the first shell two electrons are there in the second shell totally eight electrons in the fourth shell eight electrons and last shell two electrons so what is the electronic configuration of calcium in the first shell two second shell 8 third shell 8 and fourth shell is 2 so what is first shell k shell 2 second shell l 8 third shell m 8 and last shell n is what 2 dear children now you know the electronic configuration and how to find let us find out the aluminum electronic configuration see the figure and find it out in the first shell how many electrons are there only two electrons in the second shell eight third shell is three so electronic configuration of aluminum atom z is equal to 30 you know that what is z z is the symbol for atomic number okay so in the first shell k shell is two L shell eight, M shell three electrons. So its electronic configuration is two eight three. Do you know what is Yukawa forces? 
the forces between the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus are of special kind called yukawa forces this strong force is more powerful than gravity now we'll see the geometric representation of atomic structure of elements knowing the mass number and atomic number of an element we can represent atomic structure now we are seeing this figure it is the at atom of oxygen Ge geometric representation of atomic structure so geometric representation of atomic structure how you will write for oxygen symbol is that o and its mass number 16 will write in the superscript and atomic number 8 we will write in the subscript so mass number symbol is a is equal to 16 atomic number symbol is earth is equal to 8 number of neutrons is equal to a minus z is equal to 16 minus 8 is equal to 8 number of protons you know that 8 number of electrons is 8 electronic configuration is in the first shell k shell 2 in the l shell is 8 6 okay so this is the electronic configuration of oxygen and geometric representation of atomic structure of oxygen element so in the electronic configuration we will write 2 6 next topic is that valency electrons what is valency electrons in the above example we can see that there are six electrons in the outermost shell of oxygen atom these six electrons are called as valency electrons so what is valency electrons the electrons present in the outermost shell that is called what valency electrons so for example oxygen atom valency is that six valency that is present in the outermost shell now what is valency the combining capacity of an atom of an element to form chemical bond is called its valency the valency of an element is is equal to the number of electrons equal to the number of electrons requires to complete eight electrons in valency shell now we'll see the valency of metal valency of non metal what is the valency of metal number of valency electrons what is the number of valency electrons in the outermost shell how many electrons is present here that is the number of valency electrons for valency of metal for example sodium if you take a sodium in the outermost shell only one electrons is there so that is the valency of electrons this is because sodium is a metal and what is the valency of non metal if you take a sulfur atom its electronic configuration is 2 8 6 so here for valency of non metal we will use a 8 minus 6 here 8 is the formula to find the valency of non metal so minus number of valency electron present in the outermost shell so 8 minus 6 what you will get 2 so 2 is the valency of sulfur now we'll see what is isotopes isotopes are atoms of the same element which have same atomic number but different mass numbers in nature a number of atoms of some elements have been identified which have the same atomic number but different mass numbers for example take the case of hydrogen atom it has three atomic species as shown below so in all the three hydrogen atom there is the same atomic number so you already know number of protons present in the hydrogen atom is 1 in all the three so that is the atomic number so what is mass number number of protons plus number of neutrons in the first protium there is a only one protons okay so there is one 
there is no neutrons in the first atomic hydrogen atom in second deuterium there is a number of protons is one and number of neutrons is one so here mass number is two in the third tritium there is a number of protons is one and number of neutrons is two so totally three is the mass number in all the three atomic number is same but mass number is different so what is isotopes isotopes which have the same atomic number but different mass numbers now we'll see the what is isobos let us consider two elements calcium atomic number 20 and argon atomic number 18 they have different number of protons and electrons but the mass number of both these elements is 40 it follows that the total number of nucleons in both the atoms are the same. They are called isobars. Atoms of different elements with different atomic numbers which have the same mass number are known as isobars. So for example, argon and calcium. It has same mass number and different atomic number and it is the opposite of isotopes. Next we are going to see is that what is isotones. The above pair of elements boron and carbon has the same number of neutrons but different number of protons and hence different atomic numbers. Atoms of different elements with different atomic numbers and different mass numbers but with same number of neutrons are called isotones. Next we are going to see is about laws of chemical combination. In the 17th century scientists had been trying to find out methods for converting one substance into another. During their studies of chemical changes they made certain generalizations. These generalizations are known as laws of chemical combination. These are law of conservation of mass, law of constant proportions, law of multiple proportion, law of reciprocal re proportions and Gale laws, law of gaseous volumes. Out of these five laws you have already learned the first two laws in class 8. Let us see the next three laws in detail in this chapter. Before going to see this law, we have to know what is a chemical reaction. Combination reaction in a reaction where two or more substance combine to form a single substance. The combination of different elements to form a compound is governed by certain basic rules. These rules are known as laws of chemical combination. For example, sodium element combined with chlorine it gives a new form of substance that is sodium chloride it is a common salt so 2Na plus Cl2 gives 2NaCl that is the common salt new substance now we will see the law of multiple proportions what is law of multiple proportions this law was proposed by John Dalton in 18 not for it states that when two elements a and b combine together to form more than one compound then masses of a which separately combines with the fixed mass of b or in simple ratio to illustrate the law let us consider the following example here carbon combines with oxygen to form two different oxides carbon monoxide CO and carbon dioxide CO2. The ratio of masses of oxygen in CO and CO2 for fixed mass of carbon. Let's see the table given below. Let's see the table. What are the two compounds given here? Carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide CO, CO2. Number of atoms in grams of carbon 1, 12 gram and carbon dioxide is 1 12 gram number of atoms in oxygen 1 16 gram and 2 32 gram to find the ratio of masses c is to o 
that is carbon oxygen 12 is to 16 or 1 is to 1.333 gram 12 is to 32 or 1 is to 2.666 gram next law we are going to see is about law of reciprocal proportions the law of reciprocal proportions was proposed by jeremiah's richard in 1792 it states that if two different elements combine separately with the same weight of a third element the ratios of the masses in which they do so or either the same or simple multiple of the mass ratio in which they combine Consider three elements hydrogen, oxygen and water as shown below. Here hydrogen and oxygen combine separately with the same weight of carbon to form methane CH4 and carbon dioxide CO2. Find out ratio of this methane and carbon dioxide. Let's see the table compounds the two compounds given here methane CH4 and carbon dioxide CO2. Combining element is C H it is carbon hydrogen and combining element in carbon dioxide C O is the oxygen carbon oxygen combining weights 12 4 and 12 32 so ratio of different masses of hydrogen 4 G and oxygen 32 gram that combines with same mass carbon so what is the ratio 4 is to 32 or 1 is to 8 this law is that gay lussac's law of combining volumes according to gay lussac's law whenever gases react together the volumes of the reacting gases as well as the products bear a simple old number ratio provided all the volumes are measured under similar conditions of temperature and pressure. This law may be illustrated by the following example. This law may be illustrated by the following example. It has been experimentally observed that two volumes of hydrogen reacts with one volume of oxygen to form two volumes of water as shown in figure. The ratio of volume which gases bears is 2 is to 1 is to 2 which is a simple old number ratio. So in this figure we can able to see two volumes of hydrogen react with one volume of oxygen to give two volumes of water vapor. Next we are going to see is about what is quantum numbers. When you specify the location of a building you usually list which country it is in, which state and city it is in that country. Just like we have four ways of defining the location of a building, country, state, city and street address. We have four ways of defining the properties of an ele electron, example for quantum number. So, Thus, the numbers which designate and distinguish various atomic orbitals and electrons present in an atom are called quantum number. Let's see the four types of quantum number or as follows. Now we'll see the table. Quantum number symbol information conveyed. Quantum number principal quantum number symbol is n. Information conveyed is the main energy level. Next quantum number is that azimuthal quantum number with symbol L, subshell or shape of orbital. Third quantum number is that magnetic quantum number, symbol M, orientation of orbitals. And fourth one is that spin quantum number is yes, spin of the electron. So about these quantum number we will learn more detailly about this in the higher class.